Before you go to the Department of Public Safety to get your driver license, write out a form that says I verify that I am an authorized employee preparing driver license for the state of Oklahoma and facial and iris and fingerprint scan and this and all other procedures the state of Oklahoma requires to attain a driver license is not the mark of the beast as described in the Geneva Bible used by the pilgrims that traveled from Europe on the Mayflower ship reaching what is now the United States of America in one 1620 and signing a compact saying they came here for the advancement of the Christian faith, and the majority of the American people excluding Indians at the time the Constitution of the United States of America was being written proclaimed to be Christians and fought wars to have a separate government from the rest of the world. Never is it submitting to anything that violates the current United States of America Constitution First Amendment that in no way is submitting to any deity religion which violates the Christian faith of the Geneva Bible that no way is this selling my soul to anything. Signature X. If they refuse to sign the form then it shows, and most likely demonic, or else why would anyone refuse to sign it? I you believe that you can write this out better please show how to in comments below. Also with a piece of cardboard right on the cardboard. I believe in Jesus the Christ, I reject the mark of the beast, I believe September 11, 2001 was an inside job. And hold the, the cardboard up to your face while having your picture taken for your driver license, they will probably reject anything covering up your face, but that does not mean you cannot hold a sign up next to your or having it tattooed to your face. But if they refuse to allow you to show the sign, then that is a violation of constitution, freedom of press, and speech. I did a little bit of research what Bible the pilgrims used, which is the Geneva Bible, which by what little I read teaches the same thing as the King James, needs a better name, version of the Holy Bible. And I also did some research to find out if the framers of the Constitution were Christians, but I would not matter if they were Christians, or not because the majority of the people excluding Indians were Christian at the time the Constitution of the United States of America was being written, and if they were denouncing the very reason the pilgrims came to America as it say in the Mayflower Compact, for the advancement of the Christian faith, then, then they would be going against the will of the majority of people at that time, which would make them a bunch of criminals just like a street gang. Do not listen to these atheists, they tell lies, do a little research shows they are lying, then the argument goes around and around in circles with stuff they cannot prove. But I do believe most of framers of the Constitution were Christians. I read some of the letters written by George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, and it clearly shows that the belief in Jesus the Christ, the words of Benjamin Franklin as to Jesus of Nazareth, my opinion of whom you particularly desire, I think the system of morals and his religion, as he left them to us, is the best the world ever saw, or is likely to see. Thomas Paine was an immigrant, and said to believe in Islam, and Benjamin Franklin scorned him for his belief. The framers of the Constitution were for the most part neutral concerning religion, because even back then there were churches that could not read fifth grade to know what the Holy Bible teaches, they were called Quakers and Shakers because that is what they did, and they did not want one of these weird religions taking over, but they certainly were not trying to keep the guidance of God and Christian morals out of government.
Benjamin Franklin was against any type of one person ruler as emperors, kings, called presidents, and governors, and the problem in America is politicians should be paid the minimum wage, and there needs to be more representatives, and it should be we the people that vote on all the major issues, and not liars that lied their way into public office that do all the voting for us. And as it is written, let the prophets teach two or three or more, and let the prophets judge the prophets, and let the people judge the prophets. I should also say this, there is no such thing as separation of church and government as you will find in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle. Paul telling us not to take our affairs to the unjust world to be judged, but for the church to make judgment. Also 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 that the government or governors is part of the church, Yahushua called Jesus the Christ said to Pontius Pilate in St. John chapter 18 verse 36, not exact words, my kingdom is not of this world, if it was my world, my servants would fight for me, but in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira died for lying, and Acts chapter 12 verse 28, which some churches as the Southern Baptist believes is in the Old Testament, because we are now under grace, thus no more wrath from it or God, but apparently that is only true if you believe in the absolute righteousness of Yahushua, called Jesus the Christ, because as King Herod found out not to blaspheme the Christ, or try to murder the apostles, or be turned into worm food. Because Yahushua called Jesus the Christ who never committed a sin but was unjustly executed by the Roman government because cause and effects of Satan the devil and his children therefore restitution is owed and Yahushua called Jesus the Christ now has the legal right revoke all authority from Satan the devil and his children. Now the meek by legal contract own the earth, and only Christians by legal contract are allowed to set up a government or earth. There is no such thing as separation of church and government, but there are such things as false apostles who were never chosen by it or God to be an authority in the church, and it or God defiantly does not choose non-believers in the Christ to be an authority in the church. And yes, they misinterpret scriptures as Romans chapter 13 to call a ruler as Pharaoh or Nero or Adolf Hitler a minister of God is insane and it or God is not the author of confusion. How are we Christians to treat atheists and people of Islam and other religions? We are to make peace with them when possible, and in the epistle of John says do not to receive non-Christians in your house never bid them Godspeed, for if you bid them Godspeed then you are a partaker of their evil deeds, but as the story of the good Samaritan we are not to let them suffer, but we defiantly are not put them in position of high authority, it's the same as giving the enemy bullets.